So you know the basics of audio and how to get your, your, your microphones connected to your hip bones, I mean your video cameras, and all that good stuff, but now you want to know how to actually go about doing some things on set that will make your sound a lot better. So we're going to talk about some audio techniques right here, right now watching the world do something something okay so the first thing you want to think about is noise right because noise is the opposite of what we usually want when we're recording so we don't want ugly sounds in order to minimize this we do a couple of things with our microphone and the placement of our microphone and the selection of our microphone in order to minimize getting too much noise so let's imagine that we've got a dude right here. Uh, it could be a dudette. There's no reason to be sexist about this. We can make that a hideous looking person. Okay, looks like a Muppet. Uh, so this is our subject. This is our person who's going to be talking. So here's their talking, talking part, their mouth, I guess is what you would call that. And in order to get this shot, I'm sorry, the lack of pupils there is really bothering me. We would get a boom pole extending out towards the person. We'll just pretend that our camera is over here. Nice little tripod, happy little tripod. Okay, and then we're gonna put a microphone at the end of this to point at our subject so that we get a good sound. Right, so how do we orient that microphone and uh, what does that have to do with sound? Well, the first thing we know is that we wanna target the throat, which obviously I drew this person without having, so we're going to target that ambiguous joint where a neck should be. <laughs> so this is, remember, the, the source of most of the vibrations of human speech and a good place to aim the microphone. But do we want to come at it, you know, with a, a boom pole down here and point directly there? Or do we want to come at it at a 45 degree angle or something else? Alrighty, so here's what you want to know. Your default position for your microphone should be straight up and down vertical, and that would be pointing in this direction. Why is this? Well, I will tell you why is this. It's because, remember our shotgun microphone has a pickup pattern that likes things in the front, and a little bit in the back, unfortunately, but it really, really, really doesn't like things off to the side. It rejects the sounds perpendicular to its own axis, right? So what that means is that there is a nice big circle all the way around your microphone on this axis that it's not gonna hear. So what that means is that if we put this over the person, that means that we're not gonna hear anything all the way around them we're only going to hear right now what's what's coming out of the floor, which obviously is not ideal. But when you think about your set, that means that all the people that are back here, all the people that are over there, everywhere in space around the person is going to have the sound rejected, and that's going to reduce the amount of noise. But obviously, your microphone can't be straight up and down because we're not recording things that are on the floor. So what you do is use that as a baseline. You start vertically and then you make a slight adjustment from there so that you're pointing at that sweet spot, but you're still getting a rejection pattern that's gonna go mostly all the way around your subject. So it's not perfect because it's not pointed straight up and down, but it's still rejecting a whole bunch of sound from all the way around in 360 degrees. Compare that to if we were to put, point the microphone directly at the throat, then we'd be rejecting this sound and this sound, which means we wouldn't hear what was going on directly above or directly below them. But those aren't places that are likely to have a whole lot of our annoying sound anyway. It's all about like on the flat earth, which the earth is not flat. Don't let me try to tell you that. But on the plane, uh, no, that's, that's also flat. Anyway, on the surface of the earth, let's call it the surface of the earth, which appears flat from our minuscule perspective, that's where our problems are going to be. There's going to be people behind the subject and to the left of the subject and to the right of the subject, et cetera, et cetera. And also, most importantly, in front of the subject where the camera is and all the rest of the crew. So you want to eliminate that noise, which means you want to put your microphone as close to perpendicular as you can, but still getting that slight tilt so that you can be aiming for the voice box. Excellent. Yes, I think so. 
Now, having said that, uh, there is actually some noise that we do want in a strange way, and this is what's called room tone. And room tone uh, is also sort of thought of as the ambient sound in your space and the way that sound happens based on your location. So remember, sounds uh, are, are pressure waves or vibrations and they bounce off of things and um, have reflections and echoes and all those good things. Acoustics, I guess, is what we would call that in general. And so what you want to do is you want to capture some of that because if you need to generate silence, it turns out that silence is not actually silent, depending on your location. So here's how this works. Um, you record some dialogue and the person's talking and da 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 and they're talking and they're talking and talking and talking and um, underneath all of that you're going to hear the stuff that is happening in the room. Now you're going to reject most of the noise but you are going to hear uh, you know certain aspects of what is considered silent in the room, sort of what they call like the noise floor. And this is affected by everything that's in the room. So the fact that your crew is there and your lights are there and um, you know everything that's going on at the time uh, in terms of the temperature and the pressure and everything has an effect on this. Uh, and we don't normally hear this. We, our brains filter this out. We usually attribute the, you know, the sound of silence to being nothing uh, because it doesn't, it's not useful to us. Our brain filters it out. Well, your camera, your microphone, they don't filter it out because they don't have a human brain. And if you think about it, it would be hideously weird if they did. So it's probably best that uh, our cameras and microphones don't have human brains attached to them uh, because I, I think it would, it would be terrifying. But um, what that means is that we have to sort of compensate for this. And what this often comes out in the editing phase, say that we've got this long conversation, uh, but we decide that we need to put a little bit of breather space in there, a little breather space, a little slowing it down. So I'm gonna actually take this part of my audio and I'm gonna move it down a little bit so that there's a break between those two things. Now what happens here is that I now have silence. And if I cut out this part with it as well, so you know, normally when when this happens, you're cutting all of it at once. So you end up with this gap. And this gap sounds really bad because what happens is the the general sound goes clips down to nothing and this clips down to nothing and you have this really obvious gap in your sound because you're basically hearing the background noise going and then it goes and you can tell that there's been a cut there and it's very jarring so what we do instead is if we have a little piece of this room tone that we can use you know we, we, we do our cut and it moves the all of the audio with it but if we have a section that's just the room tone, if we go ahead and, and record something without any dialogue, we can place that back in here. If I can do it with a pen, we place that back in here and it'll be continuous. So it'll be like our person's talking and then there's a natural break where the room tone is still going on and then they pick back up and it's like there was never an edit at all. So that is the purpose of room tone, but you have to get this separately. You can't pull this out uh, from separate from the audio recording. These, you know, I'm showing these as two sort of separate things just for illustrative purposes, but they're all recorded into the same sound wave. And when you chop it up, you can't select uh, the room tone separately from the audio. So what do we do? Um, it's simple, actually. Uh, what we do, we we actually just uh, record silence. And I know that sounds kind of weird because silence is is the absence of sound. But as we said before, silence is not actually silent. So the um, Simon and Garfunkel were right about the sounds of silence. Uh, so here's what you do: after you get your last take. Uh, that you like and you're ready to move on to your next setup, you actually do something that seems really weird. You tell everybody, hey guys, we need 30 seconds of room tone, everybody stand still and be quiet, and then you continue to record on your tape with your microphone where it was when you were uh, you know, getting your dialogue. And you might need that from different places um, if you were uh, recording in a couple of different spots to get different people's dialogue because it's gonna sound different from different perspectives. Um, so basically the reason you do that is that like I said, everything in the room has an effect 
on what things sound like. So an empty room is going to sound a lot different than a room with a bunch of human bodies in it and a bunch of lights and a bunch of cameras and a bunch of gear and a bunch of gearboxes and all that kind of stuff. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're representing the space as it sounds when you recorded the dialogue as well, because that's what it's gonna have to match. So you don't wanna wait until everybody's gone. You can't do this while people are chit-chatting. You can't do this while people are setting up. You can't even come back another day and get good room tone because things like the time of day, the temperature, the relative humidity, and barometric pressure, all of those things will have an effect on what a room sounds like. So you wanna get that sound at the time, as close to the time as you can match it, but you also need silence from all of your people. So it's a it's a discipline thing. And uh, people on professional sets actually know how to do this. They just sit there and they chill out for a few seconds and uh, kind of have this short meditative period where everyone sort of closes down and reflects on what they just did until the sound person goes, okay, got it. And then everybody goes about their business. So that's how you get room tone. And that gives you this nice little clean audio sample of what nothing sounds like so that you can put that sound of nothing back in to cover your edits. So make sure that you get a lot of nothing and you'll be good. Another thing you wanna do while you're on set is you wanna actually get as much of your sound effects as you can. So a lot of people think that sound effects are something that happen in post-production and somebody else is gonna take care of that. You're gonna have a sound designer and he's gonna do all of your sound effects. Well, here's the thing about sound effects. Sound effects um, should ideally, uh, in, a, in normal circumstances, sound like they sort of actually do. There's some exceptions. Uh, real gunshots don't sound very cool, so they don't ever sound like they do. Uh, fight sounds, uh, you're gonna wanna sweeten up in post. But for the most part, the little things that happen, your incidental stuff like footsteps and doors opening and closing and putting props down and all that kind of stuff. You're gonna to wanna to get that on set, but you're never likely to get those really well while you're actually shooting your scene. So what you wanna do is you wanna get close-ups of the uh, stuff that's happening after you get a good take. So the way you do that is uh, after you're, you're done shooting that scene, uh, what you'll go through is uh, just with audio, you'll come in and you'll get your microphone really close to, let's say, uh, we were doing a scene that has a telephone, right? And this is a telephone that no telephone has ever looked like this, but we're going to have you guys bear with me that that's what I think a phone looks like. So you can come and get this ringing telephone and you can get it from really close up after the take. And then you can take that sound and you can edit it into the finished piece. And then what you have is you have what that phone sounds like in that location and it will match perfectly without having to spend hours and hours trying to recreate the acoustics of the room. Because again, remember where you are and the size of your space and the types of surfaces that are in there are gonna affect how those sounds bounce around and sound differently. Again, imagine a ringing phone in your closet versus a ringing phone in the middle of a giant cathedral and you get the idea. You know, we've all experienced that way that things sound different. So if you take a few seconds, this really only takes like literally just a few seconds to, to roll a couple of these sound effects while you're on location, doors closing, footsteps, props banging around, phones ringing, etc, etc. Whatever it is that's actually happening in your shot, grab those sound effects right there and they will seamlessly match uh, when you lock, lock them in and post. If you wait and try to get all your sound effects off of a sound effects library online or record them somewhere else, uh, you're going to spend an awful lot of time trying to get them to match and most likely they still won't be kind of perfect. So grab your sound effects, your close-ups, sounds uh, of your sound effects while you're there and you'll save yourself an awful, awful, awful lot of trouble and you'll be good. Similar to grabbing your sound effects, you can also get what's called wild lines. Now, this is, uh, sounds like a, a great rock band, you know, we're wild lines, man, come check us out, me, 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 but that's not what it is at all. Actually, what it is, is it's an audio take 
of your dialogue. Now, you've all probably heard about ADR, this process in which uh, actors go into the studio and they try to recreate their dialogue in a painstaking process of looping over and over and over again and trying to make that match the environment. When it's done well, it's rare, and usually when it's done, it still can be told, you know, uh, a, a good audio person can still tell it apart, and if it's not done super, super, super professionally, then you're still going to sound like it wasn't recorded on location at the time. So you're, it's kind of a waste. It's a waste of time and effort and probably a lot of things that you don't have, like time, money, and effort, and availability of your actors to come back. So ADR is sort of a myth. Don't imagine that you're going to be able to come back and get this stuff later. Instead, what you should do is grab wild lines. And what that means is when you're on set, again, after you've finished getting your good take for the camera, you want to do a take for audio. So like we did with our sound effects, you're going to have your dude or dudette. Again, we'll do dude this time. We did, we did a dudette a minute ago. And you're going to come in with your boom microphone and do a good take where you can get the mic really close. Now the difference here is that um, you know you were shooting your wide shot or a medium shot and you couldn't quite get your mic as close as you want. In this shot, you don't have to worry about where the microphone is so you can get it literally like right up uh, pointed at the person's uh, noisy bits <laughs> and then uh, get the best perfect sound that you can and then have the actor run their lines again. And it's never going to be 100%, but you're more likely to get a matching performance directly after, like just immediately after that last take. They'll be able to sort of remember how they said it and, and repeat it uh, in something that's very close to that original take uh, so that you'll probably be able to get something that will work if you need to replace the dialogue for whatever reason. Um, this is especially important in noisy environments, like if you're shooting outside and you have long wide shots, uh, you can you can have your actors redo the take with the microphone really close so that you get all of that um, Location, but without all of the traffic noise and everything else that's going on because you've got your mic extra close at that point So grab your wild lines uh, Do them immediately after the take so that the actor can remember what they're saying and doing and then you can drop that stuff in in post-production if you need to replace it because there's too much noise in the original dialogue track so just it's basically the equivalent of what we do with sound effects, but we're doing it with voice. Now, there's one final thing that I would like to tell you as a good tip, and it has to do with your volume levels. Um, on your camera, you have two inputs. And what you can do is you can actually run your mic into uh, input two, which is, we'll call it channel two, and it can clone to channel one as well. So you can record the same sound onto the two channels that you have. Uh, the DV tape is gonna record two separate independent tracks of audio that it calls channels. Uh, and if you have just a single microphone feeding it, then this actually works pretty well because what you can do is you can run this channel loud, and then you can run the second channel not so loud. So why would you wanna do this? Well, this way you get a good hot signal where it's nice and full and the, the signal to noise ratio is, is really high, which means that your volume of your speaker is, is way greater than the volume of the other stuff around them because we've got it nice and, and turned up good. And then on channel two, you're going to have it a bit lower. And this is so that you have something called overhead. And the overhead is in case the person goes a little bit higher, you're still going to have room to record them before it peaks out and distorts. Because the problem here is there's only a little bit of headroom, so if there's something a little too loud, like a cough, or a, or a, some guy gets really excited and goes, whoa! I mean, you can hear that sounds terrible. Um, audio clipping is an irreparable, terrible, painful thing. So if your volume levels are too high and you're consistently, you know, riding over 100% on your volume, I don't even that that's the worst illustration possible if you're if you if, if you were to watch your volume and it's it's consistently out in the red and pegged out then your audio is going to be terrible and you won't be able to fix it so you could run your audio really low all the time but then you're not going to have a very strong signal you're going to hear a lot of the noise because you're going to be amplifying that and everything gets amplified equally so you're going to amplify the noise and the voice but if you're able to run the same input this one microphone plugs into channel two and then you use your camera to clone that audio to channel one as well 
then you can record them at two different volumes and have one that's nice and loud and will probably distort if the person goes ah -ha -ha! but then you've also got your other one that's running a lot lower so let's say that we've got this peaking at eight normally we'll have this peak at like five or six so that if he goes a couple levels over he's going to peak but if this person goes a couple levels over they're only going to be at an eight and so they'll still be nice and solid sound there and then you can sort of selectively choose between these uh, you'll use your strong signal for all the parts that are good and if there's any part where this clips out then you'll be able to drop in your quieter signal to compensate and then go back to your good signal so this all might be a little bit confusing if you've never worked with audio before but just remember um, you can set one of your inputs to be loud and one of your inputs to be quiet and then you'll be covered uh, regardless of what happens with your audio because it's sometimes you know a little bit unpredictable Things like this will help you uh, make the most out of your audio, and that's the idea of audio techniques, which is what the pros do, and I'm sure you will develop your own as well. So go out there and give these a shot and see what that does for your audio, and remember that people will watch grainy, blurry, crappy video as long as they can hear what's going on, but the second that your audio sounds like this, take off your headphones, they will turn the video off and they will go away and they will never come back so make sure your audio is good make sure your visuals are good too and you will be on your path towards professional video production am i done can i can i quit now can i can i can i go home please